Sorts of Karak multiplayer action. Today we've got a pretty darn special game for you guys. This is from the uh, Game with the Devs Night, which happened just about a week ago. And a bunch of the developers from BBI, as well, in fact, as some of the guys from Gearbox, jumped on and had a few games with the community for a couple of hours. And it was an awesome time all around. So I got this replay from the community manager of Blackbird Interactive, and uh, I'm going to cast it for you guys. So this is actually a pretty cool game. Um, we have both BBI and uh, Gearbox present in this replay, so let's get started. We are going to have spawning on the south side of the Boneyard. We've got Team 1, and we are going to have BBI Ian playing as the Coalition Forces. Now, Ian is the community manager of Blackbird Interactive, and he has done an absolutely fantastic job of growing and supporting the community for this game. So a big shout out to him for being a top tier community manager and an all around awesome guy. Now, his he's going to be playing the Purple Coalition, looking pretty sweet here. Now, his ally spawning right beside him is going to be Raving Loon who I have never had the opportunity of casting yet, but uh, I think he's a rather new player. As a matter of fact, I have seen him around the Discord recently, um, so I think he's pretty new, so it'll be kind of cool to see what he brings to the table in terms of playstyle. He's going to be playing as the Soban, with a pretty damn nice looking carrier. Now their opponents, Team 2, spawning on the north side. We have got Gearbox Burly. First time I have seen a Gearbox representative in this game. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Burley is the producer, actually, of not only Deserts of Karak, but Homeworld Remastered as well. So it is a pretty big honor to have him joining us for this game here. Uh, his ally spawning directly beside him. Oh, pardon me. He is going to be playing as the Coalition as well, uh, with a nice orange carrier. And his uh, ally is going to be Silum. Another player that is fairly new onto the scene, I have seen Silum around the Discord, but again, I have not had the opportunity to cast any of his matches. So we've got a couple of new players on the scene, some Blackbird Interactive developers and some Gearbox developers, so this should be a pretty damn awesome game. It is going to be Coalition and Soban versus Coalition and Knef. So pretty awesome. Let's see what we've got here. Uh, pretty much all four players are opening fairly standard at this point. Um, we've got Silum doing a bit of long distance mining. He has saturated his main. What is this? Oh my goodness, he has got two production cruisers out on the field, so it looks as if Silum is going to go for the classic double production cruiser aggression. I really, really like this build. Uh, and that's pretty cool to see a new player get on board with this strategy. Now his ally Burley has positioned his carrier kind of in between his two resourcing points. Now this is something you see uh, a lot of inexperienced players do. Now not to disparage him for it, I used to do this myself uh, until I learned that this is actually not something you want to do. Um, so if you're a new player and you're watching this, what you want to do is always leave at least one edge of your carrier right by your starting resource locations because you have more resources here than anywhere else. So it's absolutely crucial to cut down this mining time. So yeah, just a small misstep here. Uh, so both Team 2 looking to get some extra resourcing done. Team 1, however, has grabbed two artifacts and is on the move. And Jesus Christ, Ian, you monster. Look at this. Ian has gone directly for a mass AAV rush. Does he have any upgrades? He does. Playing like a pro. He has got heavy armor vehicles. Level 1 research and 6 AAVs on the field. Good grief. Now, it looks like Silum has gone for the double production cruiser Assault Ships, a build I am very, very fond of. Uh, if you have watched any of my videos, which I'm sure you have, this is a build I like myself, especially with the Knef. And it looks like they are going to absolutely destroy this base runner, uh, provided that they can focus it down, and it looks like they are going to. So. Nice play by Silum. He's going to shut down one of the artifacts. Oh, is he? Good grief, with like half a second to spare. I anticipate this one's going to be able to make it in, but that is cool nonetheless. So they were Team 2 with a very, very strong aggression 
able to shut down one artifact, but Team 1 is pushing back hard. They are going to be able to take down one of these railguns. There is another railgun coming out of Burley's carrier here, but he is moving his carrier uh, all the way around this rocky formation, so this is going to hurt his resourcing in a big, big way. Now, he was able to get out railguns, which is definitely the answer for this, but some nice smoke from Ian here. He's going to get his AAVs right on top of these railguns. That is going to allow these AAVs to make short work of these railguns and sweep around these rocks. Really nice move here. And that is going to totally shut down mining. Already a couple of salvagers have gone down. Now what Burley wants to do is he wants to bring his carrier back here and get salvagers out of harm's way. Oh god. He is going to lose so many salvagers here. I'm probably missing some massive action on the other side. Now I don't know why Sir, um, pardon me, I forgot his name here. Silum. I don't know why Silum isn't pushing because he needs to push uh, big time. He can absolutely devastate both players' economies, but I suppose that Burley is in a lot of trouble here, so... Oh, epic missile. Very nice missile. This is what you want to see, using your uh, carrier's Kinef missile system to help support his ally here. I really, really like that. Now, it looks as if Burley lost two out of six salvagers here, so not too bad. I think he lost all four that were on here, so in total, six salvagers lost for Burley. Let's check the unit's loss tab. Indeed, six salvagers and three railguns. That's what I anticipate this means. Bring back up the uh, production tab. So Burley, damn man, he got wrecked absolutely hard from Ian's push, and I really like that. And now we've got AAVs coming out from Raving Loon, uh, and they're going to go along the left flank here and support Ian's... AAVs, and it looks like this base runner is screwed for sure. A nice play by Burley trying to grab an artifact while Team 1 was busy harassing them. However, these forces are definitely going to intercept it and shut that down for sure. And a nice unit composition here. Um, I really, really like when teams work together like this with their unit composition. These LAVs will be very, very effective at protecting these AAVs from railguns, and even from a little bit of light air at the beginning of the match, but look at this ball of assault ships midfield in brief. Eight assault ships, they do have an armor upgrade. So this is pretty dangerous here. And it looks like we're going to have an absolutely sick battle here right in the middle. Let's get some sweet footage of this thing. We've got AAVs versus assault ships. Some nice smoke, going to cut those reinforcements off. Oh, the superior damage of these assault ships and the uh, AOE of their uh, weapon system won that battle quite significantly. And here's a fight that Raven Loon does not want to take. These AAVs are absolutely done for. This is just too big of a ball of uh, assault ships that it's suicidal to send AAVs. But Strike Fighters, some really nice Strike Fighters here from Ian, I presume? Yes, it is. Ian, you are learning like a boss, man. He has gone AAV rush directly into Strike Fighters. Now, he has three on the field, and that is going to clean up a number of these uh, assault ships and force them into a full retreat, so I like that play from Ian. And now, on the back of that, exactly what he needs to be doing. He is getting a support cruiser, looking to expand his economy. Meanwhile... Raving Loon has a support cruiser already on the field, so mining from two resource locations at full efficiency and following up with rail guns. Really, really nice. I like this play. Now, I anticipate on the back of that fight, um, Silum is going to want to probably get production cruiser refinery mode and expand his economy himself, and he needs to pump out some more units here to help protect uh, Gearbox Burley. Burley really, really needs to get his economy back underway. He suffered a huge amount of losses, and he is very, very far behind now in terms of economy. And man, those strike fighters are coming in, and they're continuing to do damage on these assault ships. However, the thing about this is, if you don't destroy any of these units, they're simply going to retreat and repair all their hit points uh, because of that. Galcian and Kinef ability for their units to regenerate hit points out of combat. So nice move, focusing down each of the uh, each 
two of these assault ships. If he's lucky, he's going to get one more, and it looks like he almost is. But his strike fighters are out of ammunition, so back home they go. It looks like after some intense fighting, we're going to stabilize in this game a little bit. Let's see what... I think this replay is from Ian's perspective. Yeah, it definitely is. So we have got LAV armor coming up on the back of that, which is an interesting choice. So Ian with the AAVs and the strike fighters and then following up with some LAVs, which is a smart move because look at the CU bank that he's got. He's got an obscene amount of CU, so he wants to dump a bunch of those as quickly as he can. If I was him, I would get the other production carrier production upgrade, get another support cruiser and just spam a bunch of LAVs to do some more harassment. However, Team 1 is still up, 1-0 in terms of artifacts, and with constant harassment from these uh, strike fighters, Team 2 looks to be in a consistent uphill battle here. I imagine that production cruiser refiner mode is finished, yes it is. So Surly wants to get one of his production cruisers back here and the other one forward. Keep some anti-air. Oh, and more salvagers go down. No, he's targeting assault ships. So more and more assault ships are going down. But Ian is going to start losing strike fighters to the anti-air fire of these production cruisers if he's not careful. He wants to keep them away from this. Oh, one goes down. And look at that. It gives a rank of veterancy to these production cruisers and that is always a good thing. Surly looking... Is this not Surly? Pardon me. I apologize. Silom. Silom, if you're watching this, I do apologize for screwing up your name multiple times now. I'm just not accustomed to casting games with you in them. So Silom is looking pretty darn strong in terms of economy. He's now mining off of three resource locations. He does want to get his production cruiser here, back here, and get his second one right here and then keep his carrier at the third one. What I like to do in these games, actually, is keep my carrier in the middle. Um, that way the carrier can respond to threats on either side and keep one of your production cruisers on each outer resourcing location. Small thing, though. Oh, Lord, we got a gunship. Is that a gunship? Yes, it is. Raving Lung with a railgun force and some serious gunship action, but a siege cruiser from Silum is now on the field. Look at this baby. It is going to be putting the hurt on these units in a big way, and it just wrecks all of those railguns at the top of the hill. It's going to be able to eat carrier, or pardon me, strike fighter crew, uh, missiles all day long. And Silum's carrier is now right here. Oh man, and they just miss shutting down this um, base runner, so Team 1 is able to secure a second artifact for a 2 nothing lead. We've got two siege cruisers on the field with a ton of assault ships and some missile ships, I think. No missile ships, okay. That was a ro an erroneous assumption on my part. I hope he has missile ship research. Uh, that would be kind of ideal, what he needs to do. His gunship is pretty much going to go unopposed and put in a bit of damage onto these assault ships. Nothing uh, decisive, though. I believe that uh, during that time we missed a little bit more harassment here. There are six salvagers. Surly really, really needs to get a support cruiser here. Um, he does have missile batteries on the field, as well as AAVs. So he's looking to, I mean, get a little bit... A little bit safer. I mean, he's pretty far behind both in terms of economy and military units. Um, his production capability is probably substantially weaker than his uh, opponent's team. Thankfully, it looks as though Surly is pretty damn strong. He has three power into um, mobility support, and he is pushing up on the left flank here with a bunch of missile ships and a couple siege cruisers. And if Raving Lun does not spot this, it could do game-ending damage uh, to his economy. It doesn't look like he has very many forces on the field now. A couple AAVs just doing a little bit of harassment here from Ian, and I do like that, but this attack poses a significant threat um, to Raving Lun. He is probably going to suffer a massive amount of damage, and 
Oh lord, he has made a very, very big mistake. He has six power and nothing uh, in his any of his carrier's systems. A couple really, really nice barrages from Silum here. Let's check this battle out. Oh, I love it. That was extremely nice position here behind the rocks. And just bombarding uh, Raving Lun across this mountainside here. I really, really like that play. Good grief. Look at these strike fighters. 14 strike fighters? Oh my god. There, that is absolutely enough strike fighters to kill one of these siege cruisers, possibly both of them. One of them is definitely going to go down right now. The second one is going to get focused immediately afterwards. And all of those assault ships and... Oh, is he going to do it? So friggin' close. A couple more missiles. Boom, there it goes. So a really, really nice play with that mass air swarm for Ian. Ian is holding down the fort here, man. He was able to clean up that entire attack force, but now... Asylum's carrier has four power into missiles, and it looks like Raving Lun is in serious, serious trouble. What does he have? He has two gunships and three strike fighters. Gunships are not going to be as effective against this carrier, but with this number of strike fighters on the field... Okay, finally Asylum puts power into his carrier's weapon systems, so it looks like we have got a carrier showdown with an absolute crazy amount of strike fighters in the air, so Silum is actually in a huge amount of trouble here. He needs to get his carrier the hell out of dodge. One thing that I gotta say, I really wish that the cinematic mode would not show the, um, the indicators for airstrikes. Unfortunately, that's something that is in the game. I'm not sure if it's a bug, but oh man, Silum with a just a bit overextended with his carrier there, and down it goes. So Team 1 looking extremely dominant there, up 2-0 uh, with artifacts, and now they have massive, massive military dominance. Looks like this game is going to turn out to be the last stand of Gearbox Burley against an overwhelming uh, opponent. Unfortunately, Burley was just never able to get footing this entire game. Suffered heinous amounts of damage. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> what is this? Don't tell me these are all Ian's. Oh my god, Ian, you have turned into a macro monster. Look at this massive swarm of LAVs. Now, some nice positioning from Burley with these AAVs. He's going to be able to see this off quite handily. And he is covered from air, and he does have a couple of railguns, a couple of AAVs. He has one power. Unfortunately, as I was saying, he was just never able to get a footing. He suffered some significant economic damage at the beginning of the game and then was the brunt of a couple more uh, attacks and backstabs throughout pretty much the entire match, so he's never really been able to get a footing. So a valiant attack from Silum. However, in retrospect, I think he should have kept his siege cruisers back here. He should have kept his carrier back here. There was really no reason for him to move his carrier uh, around this cliff. He could have just left it here and just bombed missiles over top of this cliff. And he might have even been able to take out uh, Raving Lun's carrier here, which would have evened things out quite significantly. Fortunately now for, for Burley, it looks like he's just going to be the brunt of constant harassment. Now these, this missile battery is going to be the saving grace as well as the fact that he has mostly armored units, which gunships are not effective against, and that was pretty awesome. Let's check out the flaming wreckage of that gunship as it crashes into the sands. However, at this point, Ian can simply spam air. I want to see how many strike fighters he's got. Oh, good God, look at this. <laughs> he has a full hangar of 15 strike fighters. Um, so, I mean, that can just snipe this missile battery and then proceed to kill the carrier if it wants to, but looks like Ian is just going to ignore the missile battery for now and bomb the rest of Burley's units out of existence. So I gotta hand it to Ian, a very, very strong showing this game. Now, a lot of the players here are rather inexperienced, but I did enjoy this game quite thoroughly. We got to see some really nice play from Ian and some really, really nice counterplay from Asylum. I have to commend both of those players for their showing. And I do, again, have to thank Mr. Burley for coming out and playing with us. 
Now, I myself wasn't able to make it in for any games on the Game with the Dev Knight, which is unfortunate. But I do have a ton of replays from there, so I will be casting those um, for you guys. Got a bunch of 2v2s, some 1v1s, and some 3v3s even. So we are going to get to check out a bunch of games. What do we got coming out of Burley's Carrier? Looks like Burley is in for the long haul. He wants to just make a valiant last stand here. That is going to give us time to get some sweet cinematic footage. I just love this game so damn much, in case you guys haven't noticed yet. That was another base runner. Kind of an odd choice, but uh, maybe he has researched uh, base runner inventory. Yep, it looks like he has. He is going to place down a turret right here. That is an anti-air turret, so a pretty good choice. I'll protect him from... Uh, Ian's air spam, but uh, it is just a matter of time. I'm going to pop into normal mode here and just check the map. We have a massive swarm of LAVs coming around for a flank. We have rail guns, AAVs, and some more LAVs pushing up into the front. And at this point, uh, what does Burley have? He's got a single strike fighter, so he's making uh, an AAV. By the looks of it. And uh, here it looks to be the final battle. Check out this strike fighter launching off the carrier's pad. He's going to be able to fire a couple of missiles. But oh, here comes the massive air spam. We've even got. Is that a bomber? Tell me that's a bomber. Looks like a gunship. It is a gunship up there. So massive amounts of air force. I mean, at this point, Gearbox Burley could have just tapped out of the game, but he's going to stick with it for the long haul. Let's check the health of his carrier. It is going down pretty rapidly. Now that the railgun shots are starting to find their mark, it is not going to be long before we see the end of this game. So I hope you guys enjoyed this match uh, as much as I did. If you did, smash that like button, hit that thumbs up. Uh, and if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please do so and join me for some more Deserts of Karak. I will try and post more videos. I know I've been posting not very many videos lately. I've been super busy uh, and kind of tired, but I will get the videos coming. I do have some time off work, so I'm going to spend a lot of time over the weekend and the next few days recording a ton of videos. I will get more up onto my channel. So again, thanks for joining me, guys, and I will see you next time.